Okay, welcome and thank you for attending today's webinar to discuss implementing our Rio Salado and Beach Park Master Plan. Uh, I'm Shauna Warner and I'm with the city's neighborhood services office and I'm going to be helping host the meeting today. Uh, the meeting is being recorded so that we can have it available on our website for those that couldn't join us today. Um, and if you want to go back and rewatch the meeting, you'll be welcome to do that as well. Um, all attendees will be muted during the presentation, but then we are going to open it up for questions and answers afterwards. And the slides in the presentation are numbered, so you can make note of the slide if you have a question, or you can enter your question in the chat and we'll come back to it after the presentation. Um, today's presenter is going to be Craig Hayton with Parks and Recreation, and we also have other staff available to answer questions as we get to that portion of the meeting. Uh, so again, thank you for joining us, and I'm going to turn it over to Craig. All right, thanks, Shauna. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us virtually. Um, we certainly were anticipating having this meeting back in March, but we're thrilled that you have joined us here today, whether it's in person, um, virtually on the date of September 2nd, or as a follow up watching the video. We certainly do appreciate not just taking the time out of your day to hear this presentation, but also um, just a reminder we do have a survey that is online as well that we're seeking um, some input from the public. So, a great opportunity. This is a plan that is incredibly important to us and implementing it. Um, we don't want it to be a plan that sits um, within our offices, but one that we continually um, look at implementing with public input and also with mayor and council input as well. So um, we are really diving in at a deeper level than we did during the master planning process that was incredibly important. And this is really, I, I think, even a more um, exciting time than developing a master plan because now we really get to, to get feedback and input on what some of the potential opportunities are. Um, especially as it relates to improvements around the Tempe Town Lake and the Rio Salado uh, Park area. So um, today, if I can get my um, clicker to, to work with me, we've got a few things that we're going to run through just at a very high level. Um, Sean has gone through some participation guidelines. Um, I'm going to spend half of the presentation time talking through some background information. What has led us to where we're at today? Um, and then we are going to review some of the concepts um, that we received, that were submitted through a process that I'll explain here in a bit, um, but also through some additional staff research and our internal team that really um, is has taken ownership of this implementation plan. We certainly, as Shauna mentioned, uh, we've left some time for questions and answers towards the end of the presentation. So uh, we certainly look forward to that piece. And, uh, and as Shauna mentioned, we do have a, a team here from multiple areas. Um, so I certainly will, will be happy to answer any questions that come up, but we also have a a great team with us that will be able to um, provide additional information um, and, and likely correct some of the information that I give that may be erroneous. So um, I'd like to then just start by diving into the actual master plan um, to review what it was, just to bring us up to speed. This was a plan that was um, prepared for the city of Tempe by Holly Street Studio and Florin Associates, adopted by mayor and council in the fall of 2018. And we recognize that the Rio Salado and the Tempe Beach Park, Rio Salado, Tempe Town Lake, um, certainly are grand public amenities and there's great potential. Um, the Town Lake has recently turned 20 in November of 2019, but we really wanna create a pathway forward, how we, how we can continue to manage the site from a pro programming perspective, but also what improvement potential is out there that we can actually implement uh, moving forward for the next 20 to 30 years. And we wanna make sure that we, we did so through this planning effort understanding there were some really key guiding principles that would help both inform consistency through the different areas of the parks, um, but also um, some diversity. So we had some opportunities um, really to provide some one-off opportunities within the larger 135 acre, not including the lake footprint um, that is the Rio Salado Parks and the Tempe Town Lake. So some of the guiding principles was connectivity, understanding it's important to get folks to through and from the Tempe Town Lake, either into North Tempe or into downtown Tempe or into Phoenix and the Mesa as part of a transportation network. Um, second, we saw that public ownership is incredibly important. We know that the Town Lake and the Rio Salado Parks have been a hub for events over the years, but we also know that there's an everyday use component that we wanna make sure that we emphasize as well. We can have those in balance. Um, third, we know that um, we wanna make sure that we provide an opportunity for um, Opportunities that are diverse, we want to make sure that we have both a blend of active and passive opportunities. Uh, we're going to be seeking input on which ones we think are the best moving forward, not just in concepts, but even within 
um, the opportunity for input moving forward from, from each one of you. Would you like to see one over the other? Um, and then the, the last two really tie to sustainability. We know that um, economic, environmental, and social sustainability is incredibly important, not just within the organization, but within the parks and the recreation system. And then finally, um, it doesn't take long to visit a park in the summer to recognize that shade is an incredibly important element to any planning or improvement potential that is out there. So um, each of these guiding principles then um, were utilized to look at the 135 acre of the town lake, uh, the Rio Salado parks. And we, we came to a decision to break the larger park system up um, around the town lake into 12 different activity zones. These, um, again, allow us the opportunity for some consistency, but then also for some diversity in this planning effort. And to do so, um, we'll show in the next slide what the 12 different activity zones are. There were seven on the north side, five on the south side, but these really are areas that we have an opportunity to impact on a smaller level. But when you start adding improvements, and programming opportunities that we know that it can really drive uh, this important area for us for the next 20 to 30 years. Um, all of this then leads to implementation strategies. Um, we wanna be consistent with the adopted master plan as we're working towards implementing the plan, that goes without saying, but we also wanna look at programming that's worked well elsewhere. We certainly know that we have great opportunity for improvements in and around the town lake, um, but finally we know that we've gotta have a funding plan as well, and that's really, um, one of the key pieces that we're going to talk about, which really driven us to reviewing some of these concepts today as we look for um, some public-private partnership opportunities. So that's an overview of the master plan. As our team then put together some implementation strategies, we knew that a key component of that was implementing improvements. So just pulling back the curtain a bit on what some of our methodology was to identify out of these 12 zones, um, where should we really begin? And to do so as highlighted in red um, in the text on the upper part of the screen, we took all of the 12 different areas and we wanted to gauge each of the activity zones through a scoring system to determine what the improvement or an improvement impact would be, which is really a measurement of how developed or undeveloped a park space would be. Um, and then also what are the improvement potentials within those areas? So does it provide a good mix of passive and, and active opportunities? So um, taking that information, applying it that scoring and prioritization matrix to each of the 12 zones. Um, as you can see, boxed in red, the two areas on the north side across from the Arts Park, TCA, and Tempe Beach Park really scored the highest. Areas that aren't very developed, but also based on their um, the master plan opportunities really provide great opportunities for balanced uses. So those two have, have scored the highest. Um, so those are two areas we would like to develop some conceptual plans. Now, understanding that even if we just took these two areas um, out of the larger mix, we know that um, there certainly are gonna be some funding challenges associated with improvements that even are just associated with two activity zones. So we wanted to gauge what opportunities were out there. We know that we have our, our regular public funding opportunities for a capital improvement program, um, coupled with some grants that are available. And then also we could potentially look at some land sale, but we know there's also an opportunity to actually develop some partnerships with the private industry. And to do so, we've really focused on um, what's termed public-private public partnerships. This is where we have an opportunity um, to go in with a private business and look at improving an area. Um, but ultimately, what these, this led to um, was what we are calling, and we'll explain on the next slide, our request for information. So understanding um, that we are interested in funding improvements, we're also interested and seeing if there's any private business that would be um, interested in partnering with us to, to share some of that load, but also to design, build, and operate um, recreational amenities within the larger 12 activity zones. We know that we have prioritized the top two, um, but we didn't want to limit um, what we'll go through on the next slide and some of the concepts that are available to us just to those two activity zones. So that then leads us to the last piece of background that has led us to where we're at here today. Um, an RFI is a procurement term for request for information. This was our opportunity really to capture ideas of local businesses. We, as, as we mentioned, we wanna really develop a public-private partnership um, or multiple public-private partnership opportunities in and around the Tempe Town Lake and the Rio Salado Parks. And to do so, um, we put a request for information, those ideas we solicited on the street with the business community, 
um, for 90 days in conjunction with the Tempe Town Lake Turns 20 from November 2019 until February of 2020. We certainly, as I mentioned early on, have been a bit delayed due to um, not having public meetings due to COVID, but we are back here saying this is important. Um, we are gathering input. We had 18 different submissions um, in a variety of different categories. Some crossed over some of the categories on um, combined elements. Um, so we received a, a really good set of responses for us to consider, um, but we didn't want to just consider those responses without seeing what other potential um, improvements could be out there. So we researched other waterfront and, uh, and park project ideas. So I know that there's going to be there's the potential of some folks who had submitted to the RFI. We thank you for doing so. As we go through the second half of this presentation, um, I just do want to provide a warning that we have taken those submissions. We are not showing any pictures. Um, we have very generalized the submissions that have come in and lumped them in with some of the other ideas that we have found out there. We want to make sure that we're not pitching specific ideas. They were wonderful for us to have and to know what potential is out there and will absolutely inform um, our next step. But we wanted to be careful as we get to this stage looking for public input um, that we're able to step back a bit. If we had multiple submissions in one area, we didn't want to show one picture and not another. So we, we just chose the safe route there. Um, I appreciate you understanding that. Um, but we're really excited at this point, providing that background information, knowing that we're moving forward um, to prepare and to actually um, present different concepts again, that were either submitted through the RFI process or that we found as staff as a potential fit for, for in and around the Tempe Town Lake and the Rio Salado Parks. All right, so as we jump into the second part of our presentation, uh, we're going to focus, I've got an introductory slide here that really shows information that we're seeking input on. Um, if you have had a chance, because it is currently live to, to provide input on our Tempe forum um, for the survey that's out there, um, you will see that there are four different categories that we're sub actually requesting input on from a high level. There's the land, aerial, water. These are kind of primary categories for mostly active uses, but we also didn't want to discount the fact um, that we have some support amenity opportunities as well. These were things that were either submitted through the RFI process as well, or ones that we found equally important to include within this, this process. So there are four high level categories. Um, and then there are some subcategories under each one of those. We recognize we're not um, completely exhaustive in the opportunities that are here. These were ones that we found uh, that we thought would be a good fit based on what was submitted and some of the information that we came across. Certainly there are opportunities to tweak, but as we go from here, um, we'll be able to really dive into some, some opportunities potentially to pair some of these categories um, and subcategories for really for the for the enjoyment of the park user and our residents within Tempe. So we're going to zip through the next eight or ten slides um, that will really break down these areas identified in the blue boxes. Uh, we certainly are welcome to go back during the question and answer session and uh, ans answer some questions as relates to each and every one of these and some of these. Um, but um, as we go through each and every one of them, um, I'll show the first box. Um, we're identifying um, in the blue text what category and then some of the subcategories. We know that from the previous slide that land doesn't just have two, it has 11 different opportunities. In fact, there are 25, 26 different subcategories under the larger group. So we've added some text that just gives some general information. All of this information is included within the survey link. Um, as you go to Tempe Forum, um, you can right click and open as a separate tab. Um, this document here um, that'll show the different concepts so that you can just migrate from page to page um, and actually provide some input. And again, these pictures are just pictures that are out there. These are not ones that were submitted, uh, but just some representative examples of what opportunities um, are actually out there. So for land, the first two that we've identified here, observation tower and rock wall, obviously have some height to it, some representative pictures here. There's certainly some um, traditional rock climbing walls, but also some very modern ones. Um, and then on observation tower could be something that could be either coupled with this or something that is separate that just adds an, another vertical dimension, but is certainly tied to the land. Um, we also know that there's opportunities for um, land-based on the ground um, active opportunities, whether it's a fitness court, an example on the top left, uh, a skating rink on the bottom right from Chicago from Maggie Daly Park, 
um, that is an ice rink and, and also a roller skating rink during different times of the year. Um, bike ramps are an opportunity could be fit in. And as you notice on the bottom right, um, Maggie Daly Park has a, a climbing wall in the midst of their ice rink there. So there's an opportunity really to look at the bigger footprint and potentially combine some elements. And we know one element that is missing from the Tempe Town Lake and the Rio Salado Parks um, is also a playground. That may be an opportunity for folks um, while you come out and utilize um, the park space um, to, to bring really what is almost a traditional play element to a park, but maybe do it in a completely new way and a creative way that really um, is unique to the Tempe Town Lake and Rio Salado. And then a couple other land elements, more passive in nature. We've got swings, a couple um, unique types that are shown here that we found. Certainly we have opportunities to be a lot more creative in what we do um, within the regional park. Um, a carousel that, that you may be familiar with in different parks, but it's in the valley. Scottsdale, I know, has one. Um, but we also have uh, certainly an opportunity for theme gardens and pocket areas of the park um, that we can highlight some, some potential um, passive opportunities that families or individuals um, can actually enjoy and participate in by themselves. And then finally, we know that there's there are also opportunities as folks um, come to the park, maybe to come to it and use the park as a secondary use because there is something like a museum on site that you want to visit. The Tempe Center for the Arts really is uh, a key piece to that um, puzzle that already exists out there currently. Um, and then second, um, an element that may not be unique to one area of the park, but may be spread throughout the park. There could be birding and nature and educational opportunities, uh, whether it's signage or different programming opportunities that we could have, especially on the east and west side in more of what are identified as the eco zones for the Tempe Town Lake. So some great land use opportunities, land amenity opportunities. Again, this is not meant to be exhaustive and doesn't represent any of the submissions in picture form. Um, but what we wanted to do is really to take down those individual elements of the submissions and, and information that we found and really to highlight 11 opportunities that were land based. Second, we know there's opportunities also for some elevated use. Um, zip lines, certainly most folks are familiar with, um, could take riders across the lake in more of a traditional zip line, as you see in the bottom of this slide, or it could be something that is potentially tethered to a building, as you see on the right hand side from Las Vegas, um, that is more of a riding one. Um, we know that these are opportunities that would combine multiple different, potentially multiple different activity zones as um, somebody could zip line across the lake. But also there are, there are other aerial um, options and adventure and challenge course is identified in the bottom right. Um, while folks are off the ground, there are things um, for them to do of, of all ages. There's a sky ride, which is very similar on the top right to um, going across in zip line, but maybe at a, a, a reduced um, distance or an elevated distance and just maybe a little bit slower and a more passive and um, activity, but something that certainly could take folks from one side to the other. So not only is it an, an aerial option, but it's also a transportation option. And then um, tied to some of the um, aerial options, but also with the land-based um, bungee jumping may be an opportunity for us as well. And again, there are, there are really great opportunities here, but we're seeking input on the individual level um, to potentially combine some of these elements. Um, so you know, if, if you think that bungee would be great, zip lining would be great, rock climbing would be great, and potentially adventure or challenge course, then, then certainly please, um, you don't have to limit your interest to just one category here. We're, we're certainly seeking input on multiples. But we also know um, there are opportunities for water-based um, activities and elements as well. And I don't want to limit it to activities that happen on the town lake. It can be things that could be added as a water element outside of the lake as well. We know certainly we have some challenges um, with elements on the water. We, we have certainly have programming uses um, that currently take up some space, but we didn't want to limit um, the input from the public um, to things that just happen outside of the lake. So we know that obstacle courses, a couple are shown on this slide for opportunities. Um, slides as well um, could be a pretty creative and unique opportunity recreationally for folks in and around the town lake and the Rio Salado parks. Um, then some other opportunities, cable wakeboard, flowboard, um, and surf pools. These are more active elements um, where you're interacting with the water. On the top left is Oklahoma City. They've got um, a river that is right next to this um, 
pretty cool rafting course that they've got. So there are great opportunities to do things outside of the water that are still water based, uh, flow ride and flow boards um, opportunities, and then also um, cable wakeboards where there is something that is propelling you around a course and an opportunity for folks to move on the water as well. So some great water based activities that are active, but also some that are mostly passive. Um, brew boats, cycle boats, and tour boats. Um, these are things that certainly are transportation related, uh, but they're ones where you're meant to be a bit more passive and enjoy the scenery. The brew boats and cycle boats are things um, that participants can get on and they're self-powered. As you can see from the top middle, um, folks could enjoy some social interaction um, and also have a drink while they're actually pedaling and, and moving the boat along around the town lake as well. So some great on-water activities here um, not just from a tour perspective, but also from something um, that can be a bit more interactive in how folks are working with um, the actual boats and the propelling motion um, as well. We also know, um, finally, that there are some opportunities to enjoy some really creative, lazy rivers. Again, uh, that could be off and out of the town lake. Um, there could be a fountain or a splash play area. This fountain is taken from Columbus, Ohio, uh, really a magnificent fountain um, and a, certainly in, in, in a park that is very similar to Tempe Beach Park that they have. Um, but there really are great opportunities for some water-based activities and elements um, that we would love some input on and to see what some of the potential is moving forward. So those were most of the, what we would call primary activities, things that you would go and amenities, go to the lake and go to the, the parks to actually utilize. But we did want to discount the fact that there are going to be opportunities um, to be served and supported while you're there that would make your experience better and make resident and visitor experiences better. We know that if there's a lack of food, parking, restrooms, or transport, um, that the experience is typically not going to be as valuable. It will be certainly um, shorter lived and certainly would be much more challenging if there is no parking in and around the town lake. So we certainly are looking for opportunities whether it's on a, a very general side for food trucks or a restaurant on site, something that overlooks the water, um, but also transportation getting from the north side to the south side of the lake or from one end of the lake to the other that isn't on the trail network, but could potentially be on the water. So we know that these are um, maybe not what somebody would go to the park for, um, but we know that these certainly improve the experience of the fact that uh, it's, it's worth getting input from the public and understanding what is most important as we, again, as we develop conceptual plans, as we seek some input, as we put out um, a, a formal request uh, for proposals from here, we want to make sure that we don't discount some things that would make the user experience better from there. So our next steps, um, I recognize we're moving through this kind of quickly, but want to make sure that we're leaving enough time um, for the second half of the presentation for some questions. Um, but our next step, we do have a survey that is open that went live um, a short while ago until October 1st. It's at the tempe.gov slash forum. Um, we'd invite you to, to fill out the, um, the survey. As many members in your household, have them fill it out as well. Pass it along to friends and family. We are in the business of getting as much input as we can um, because we are planning on taking that input, um, taking the staff input as well, and then seeking some input from the mayor and city council at a work study presentation on November 5th. This is our opportunity to say, this is where we've come. April, 2019, we said, hey, this is what our plan was to implement. Our first phase is coming back um, with this information where the public input is certainly critical. And as I mentioned, uh, we will follow up this process um, with a request for proposal, which is really the next step to what we did with the request for information, where we're gonna seek a public-private partnership proposal to design, build, and operate an amenity or multiple amenities within the Tempe Town Lake and Rio Salado Parks. This is really where the rubber will hit the road to see what we get. We would anticipate coming back and seeking public input on those submissions. Um, but then from there, as I mentioned, we want to make sure that we don't just look at those concepts or narrow those concepts to any two activity zones. But we know a key piece of this is trying to develop some conceptual designs for those two areas on the north side of the Tempe Town Lake that I mentioned and highlighted earlier with that red box, um, just across from the Arts and Tempe Center for the Arts and the Arts Park and then Tempe Beach Park as well. So if that happens to be in conjunction with some amenities that'll go in those areas, wonderful. 
if the request for proposal to design, build, and operate an amenity ends up being out of those two areas, we will do both. Um, is what our current plan is at this point. So that's really where we're headed from here. Survey's open for a month, council presentation coming up in two months, um, and then we'll follow up with a formal request for proposal for design, build, and operate, and then also the conceptual plan for those two areas. My contact information, Craig underscore Hayton at Tempe.gov. If you got any questions, please let me know. I'm the, uh, the quote unquote project manager for this. Uh, the implementation plan, but we've got a great team. If I'm not able to answer the questions that you send me via email or that we even have here today as follow-up, um, we've got a great team with us that we can forward this information to. My phone number's on there as well. We'll be happy to follow up with any questions that we've got. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Shauna, and we'll be happy to take some questions as they come in. Okay, thank you, Craig. Um, and just so everyone knows, we have two ways that you can ask questions. Um, as Craig had mentioned, and I see we already have a question. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, you can put it in the chat box and we will read those out loud and have those answered for you. Uh, the second way you can is if you want to hit the raise hand button on your name, it lets us know you'd like to speak. If you're on a desktop or laptop, you hover over your name and it will show up on the right hand side. If you're joining us on a mobile, you can click on the chat bubble and you'll see the uh, hand that you can click on to let us know that you want to talk and then we'll unmute you and have you answer that uh, or ask your question. And then as Craig noted, um, please do fill out the survey to officially submit comments um, so that we have those on record and can um, go through those. And those will also all be available on the website after the comment period closes. And then if you do run into any technical difficulties asking questions, Craig did share his information. So just send him an email or give him a call and then we can make sure and get those answered for you. So Craig, your first question here is how much Lakeshore property is available for some of these improvements, restaurant, et cetera, as it feels seems like a lot of the shore has already been given over to developers and ASU. Great question. and. Uh, the bigger picture question or answer would be that we have about 135 acres of public park space in and around the Tempe Town Lake. Um, now, certain, that is City of Tempe property. Uh, we're not looking at potentially adding improvements to areas that, that don't have anything. We want to make sure that, um, so I would, to answer that from a, a really low level, um, every area around the Town Lake that is city property, we would potentially um, look at adding an amenity. Um, that seems to fit for that area that's consistent with the master plan. And uh, so it really opens up the opportunity that we have. We know that Tempe Beach Park is a generally developed park, as is the marina. Um, we're not discounting the fact that there could be um, amenities that would go in there. So it really opens up the full 135 acres. Okay, I'm going to take one more question from the chat, and then we'll go to hands and kind of go back and forth. So you guys all have an opportunity. So the next question, Craig, is do you have any update on the plans for the boathouse? Um, I don't have anything offhand. Um, I can certainly follow up on that. Is there anybody from a panelist perspective that could answer that information? I know the discussions continue with the Rio Salado Foundation. Um, is there anybody, Sean, do you have any information that you want to share on? On the boathouse, but we can certainly provide some follow up. If you want to email me, um, I'd be happy to provide that if we don't have any, any follow up for you. Hi, Craig, this is Sean. Hey, we don't have any additional information at this time um, as it relates to the uh, to the boathouse. Uh, we do know we have some conceptual plans and a design uh, that have been floated out there. And as you mentioned, it's by the Rio Salado Foundation. Um, and at this point in time, it's still my understanding they're still in the, uh, the, the fundraising efforts uh, for that uh, for that boathouse. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that update. Shana, do we want to take any of the raised hand questions? 
Yes, sorry. We had a couple questions showing up in the Q and A. So Laura's actually going to um, find those and read them. So if okay. you can, please put them in the chat. Sorry, we were finding other ones, but I'm going to take a couple raised hands. And then if you did put them in the Q and A, we'll get to you soon. Um, Eric, I am going to unmute you if you want to ask your question. I, um, so I am wondering about the, if you're going to do an environmental quality report, uh, the water quality already isn't very great in Tippy Town Lake. This past week, I've seen five dead fish, um, and I'm concerned about some of the proposals, how they're going to impact the water quality. Great question. Craig, I'll hand it off to the other Craig. Thanks, Craig. Um, I just wanted to uh, start by saying that um, Tepe Town Lake is a water of the U.S. and as such, it's monitored by the um, two state agencies, in fact, and uh, we test the water at Town Lake weekly um, and we make adjustments when necessary to that water to meet water quality standards for the lake, as well as uh, to allow for full body contact events such as uh, triathlons and other swims. So um, the water quality of Tempe Town Lake is actually quite good when comparable to other urban lakes um, and even to naturally occurring or man-made lakes throughout the state. But on that same front, um, I would assume that as we move forward in this process, as things are added that have the potential to impact water quality or even um, environmental quality as a whole, um, that we'll get into proper evaluations of, of those as, as this process moves forward, so. Thanks, Craig, I appreciate that. Okay, so, um, and as I mentioned, for those of you in the Q&A, Q we'll get to your questions in just a minute. We're gonna take a couple from the chat right now. Um, and so the next question, Craig, is, uh, I was curious about the development. Okay, so that was the same new boathouse. So you guys saw there's three in a row about the boathouse and welcome center. So um, we also have a project website. So we can also make sure because of the interest that we maybe put an update on there and then you can go to tempe.gov slash parks and click through to the Rio Salado Beach Park Master Plan and we'll include a link to where you could get the most up-to-date information. So uh, the next question unrelated would be, would activities in the water such as floating movies activate the need for lifeguards? Uh, that's definitely something we would have to uh, consider if we were looking at programming the lake. As with all water activities that we do currently provide, there is supervision for any of the events uh, that are water-based. Uh, you've noticed that with some of the triathlons or other swim events, they will have um, individuals in, in kayaks and other safety boats. Even our boating program, uh, from a, a city perspective, when we offer um, registration-based boating activities, we also have a, a safety boat or safety personnel uh, on the lake uh, in case an emergency uh, does occur and, and response is needed. Thanks, Sean. Click on this next up here. Okay, and then the next question is, will the RFP detail the constraints along the lake related to underground utilities, floodplains, et cetera? Yeah, and I, th I think that's a great question. Um, I'm trying to think back to the way that we have the RFI listed there were some constraints i believe listed within that but certainly um, the town lake as a waterway of the us as craig Caggiano mentioned uh, but also within the floodplain uh, with multiple utilities around there certainly are going to be some constraints on where amenities are identified and we want to make sure that as we put out an rfp that we do identify um, what we know to be potential constraints ahead of time so great question a great point our next question is, was there an in-lake swimming pool in the proposal? Um, I'm, I know that we had elements that included um, water-based elements. We, we didn't include a swimming pool um, as an amenity. So not to my knowledge on that one, something that was a pool, but there were certainly multiple water-based um, activities as we saw here. So that, that certainly could be another one. Um, or even a pool that could be off. I know that the master plan identified that in some potential areas. Okay. Okay, next question is, I live within walking distance. My main concern is safety, and I currently don't feel safe by the west side of the Mill Avenue Bridge and the north side of the lake. Could any of these ideas help improve safety to these areas? 
Yeah, great question. We tend to see safety being impacted um, certainly by maintenance activities and, and infrastructure that is there like lighting, um, how often we clean sites. We, we know that that's important, but we also know the participation and activity um, that, that we wanna bring in from a recreational standpoint also has another sense of, of adding to the safety factor. So that, you know, the amenities have the potential for all three of those. Um, there's gonna be some support amenities that go along with, um, you know, lighting will be required, sidewalks will be required to something, uh, maintenance will be required, especially when we look at some of those areas that were mentioned um, on the north side of the lake that really are limited in the amount of um, improvements that are there currently in development. Um, so additional lighting for any of those areas out, outside of the path would certainly make folks feel safer, um, but also activation and participation in those areas through additional amenities would be a key piece of that as well. Okay, next question is, are there criteria on how ideas will be selected? Yeah, initially our team has tried to evaluate all the submissions um, uh, within multiple different categories. Once we get the input from the public, um, we'll be able to really develop um, for our recommendations and really where we're moving next, um, a more um, determined matrix. But some initial things that we looked at as we just tried to identify the different um, proposals and elements that we saw was trying to identify, um, you know, would it be used by a range of people in a range of ways? Um, is it multiple seasons? Um, would it be in some of those activity zones that we know scored the highest? Those were um, some of the initial elements that we took, but we know that some of this input that we're gonna get um, is gonna be a key piece to that recommendation process as we evaluate all the options that have been proposed, but also the options that we know that are out there uh, that our team came across. So really, um, who does it serve? How does it serve? Uh, what recreational opportunities? Is it a blend of passive and active? And, and really some of those areas as well that we looked at multiple seasons. Okay, next question. Has there been any discussion on tying in the Lopiano Bosque habitat to the park redevelopment? Yeah, that, that's an interesting question because it the there are, especially within the adopted master plan, there are some connection points, whether it's on the north side of the lake and that entertainment north shore where there's the parking area that's really a shared space between Lopiano, but there are also some pass-throughs underneath the freeway and the marina. So we know that that potential already exists. Um, so the connectivity piece as a guiding principle really was a key function of not just trying to look at the Rio Salado in a bubble outside or in a vacuum outside of the different spaces, similarly to the south side to downtown Tempe. We wanted to make sure that we were able to connect to different networks um, that we were adjacent to. Understanding that Lopiano is part of the Papago Preserve, um, that's a really unique opportunity to make some connections um, with elements, but also um, just getting folks recreationally from one area to another. So that's that's a great question and, and something absolutely written into the plan and something that we would consider um, as part of our um, improvements, especially to those areas on the north side. Okay, next question. I live on the lake and pay an assessment to do so. These amenities are for the general public, residents, and visitors. Will this impact my assessment with either a reduction or increase? Um, that is a, an answer that I, I don't know the question to, but I'd be certainly happy to follow up. If you want to email me personally, I can follow up with our um, budget manager that manages the areas in and around the Tempe Town Lake. So that, that's a wonderful question that unfortunately I don't know the answer to off, off the top of my head. Uh, next question is, how is Tempe dealing with the 24-hour removal of structures from the floodplain by the Army Corps of Engineers? Craig, is that one that is tied to you at all? It would be, but I'm, I'm not aware of any Army Corps of Engineers activity to remove any structures currently. Um, if we could get a clarifier on that, perhaps. But I guess one thing we can say is that um, in in all things that go into this process, that will be one aspect that will be considered with things that go into the physical lake. Remember the lake is a recreational opportunity, but it's also a flood control opportunity um, for the city of Tempe. It's, uh, it's a very important piece of that flood control, especially for anyone who's been here back into the 80s when we had some significantly large flooding, um, primarily prior to channelization, but, but ongoing. So, um, 
And that is something that that will take a really good look at and ensure that um, the regulatory partners involved, such as the Corps of Engineers or Maricopa County Flood Control, as well as city engineering staff signs off on anything that would impact Tempe's ability to have significant flood control through the area. Uh, next question, does this project connect in any way to IDEA Tempe? It, it is not, I'm going to put my communication, my contact info back on the screen. I know I've referred to it a couple of times. Um, it, it does in the sense that there are spaces that are shared. It is not something that is tied um, as a development to what we're seeking here. Now, certainly anybody can um, submit a request for a proposal for that. Um, but as we're looking for input for the entire area in and around the Tempe Town Lake and the Rio Salado Parks, which runs from Greece over to McClintock, just as, as it crosses over in space, it has the potential um, to be within that area or something could be proposed within that area. So mostly it's the, the eco southwest side um, as identified the plane, which is more of a natural area, ecological area. Uh, but we know that there are developed pathways as well. Has there been any discussion on adding in a dock that could include retail? Uh, retail is not an idea that has come up outside of food and beverage. So that's that's a great idea. I know that there are some retail spaces on the private development side of areas in and around the town lake. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you've got some additional things that you've not heard today, um, there is a comment section within the, um, the input. Um, please, um, we're open to additional ideas that we want to consider, but, but retail is one outside of some of the food and support amenities that we've, uh, we've not considered yet. And just for everyone's benefit, Craig's referring to the survey that's online at tempe.gov slash forum. There is an open-ended question at the very end that if you have additional ideas, then you can write in um, any of them that you'd like to see. Uh, next question, can you comment to the cost to participate in public health considerations, safety, physical activity, multi-generational, et cetera? Would you mind repeating that one, Shauna, please? Yeah. Um, can you comment to the cost to participate in public health considerations, safety, physical activity, multi-generational, et cetera? That's a great question. Um, First, the master plan really identifies sustainability, which we know that social and economic um, are two key components to that. As we look then um, to that request for proposal piece, especially, um, those are going to be key things that folks who provide some proposals will have to outline. Um, I, I don't know that it'll get into what will somebody charge for using an amenity if there is a public charge to it, um, but we know that uh, the economic and social sustainability and, and making sure that we have access and accessibility and inclusiveness is, is going to be a key component to um, not just to an element um, from a public private partnership perspective, but really to managing the parks and the improvements that could potentially happen within the park system um, as a as a structure, but also from a programming perspective as well. So great question. Uh, are there any plans to extend the lake west of the TCA to Priest Road? I am not aware of any. Craig, do you know if that's anything that's been discussed? So that was discussed initially um, during the design for the new dam. The issue with doing that is, although it doesn't seem like it's very far as the crow flies, it's actually significantly lower in elevation and the amount of water you need to retain to make a dam further down from the spot that was chosen is significant. Um, additionally, the geology of the area becomes less suitable as you head toward Priest. So really the, the current location of the dam is the sweet spot between um, geology, uh, length of the lake, um, usable area and uh, impoundment of water. So um, as far as I'm aware, no, that's it's a habitat area. Um, and actually in that area is a uh, US Army Corps of Engineers habitat area as well. That's the, the more um, lush area you see below the lake um, in that area. So I think this, this master plan kind of rightly focuses on accentuating that in that area where that's considered the eco zone on either shore. Now you can't go down into the river bottom in that place, but it is a great place to view habitat area and the species that it attracts from. So, Thank you. 
And Craig Caggiano, kind of semi-related to that, the next, I don't know if it's a comment or question, but it states riparian area along the east side of the lake that would naturally filter and clean the water before it flows into the lake. Riparian area becomes another park with walkways and benches, et cetera. So maybe now for the east end, um, so if there's the, any comments related to that. Yeah, so the east area, actually where the lake's extent ends currently, uh, just west of McClintock Drive at the Maricopa County uh, flood control, grade control structure, um, that is the border of Tempe. So uh, in the river bottom and across from Tempe Town Lake is not Tempe's property. So that would have to come from a different entity. I believe that might be uh, Bureau of Land Management owned land in the river bottom as well as up onto the other side of the uh, North Shore in that area. So, and it is a nice little uh, riparian, naturally uh, occurring riparian area right now. So. Anyway, that's that's why that's not being included in this. And then one other related to the west side, Craig, um, is there any possibility in the ecosystem area of a few trails in there, like the Audubon Audubon Society area near Central Avenue? So, unfortunately, the river bottom below the dam is a restricted area. Um, the it's a it's a area that's dangerous for people to be in, um, especially below the dam. Now, the river bottom throughout. Um, the, the area throughout the extent of Tempe, as well as I believe upstream is also restricted to, to trespassing by flood control. And that's, uh, something that I think might be a smaller hurdle to overcome to get people down into, but unfortunately the area upstream is not Tempe property. So that's an even larger discussion on developing it, but the area directly below the dam is, uh, is definitely a no trespassing area and needs to be maintained as such. The dam maintains the lake level as well as gives Tempe significant flood control uh, protection and the dam is automatic. So the dam could move at any time creating water into that area if the lake level rises due to inflows. So um, we prohibit uh, access to that area for a very good reason. Now, um, the dam is a, a safe device and it works very well as it's demonstrated through the past few seasons of runoff from the SRP, season, uh, SRP system. Um, but I don't envision that um, having people regularly down in that area would be a safe or good use of the space. I think viewing it from the shores and potentially modifying how we can view it from the levees um, might be a better way to get people to engage in that area safely. Thank you. And just for everyone's benefit, we will add uh, Craig Caggiano's contact information to the website as well. As a lot of the questions, as you'll see, kind of related more to lake operations, he, he'll be able to answer as well. Um, uh, the next question is, love the brew boat idea. How would they be powered? Yeah, and I, I know that there can be multiple options for it. Um, not doing an extensive amount of research into different brew boat options. Um, the ones that we found um, were a combination of um, cycle, but also it could be ones that are a, a bit more passive for folks just get a chance to sit back. But the, the ones we did find um, did have some cycle opportunities with them um, for folks who are interested, but we know that there are opportunities for both. Next question, uh, going off the lifeguard question, what measures will be in place to make users feel safe coming to the park with these added amenities? Great question. So outside of the water, um, certainly we have a great relationship with the Tempe Police Department to have dedicated parks squad police officers. Um, there is security that uh, the Tempe PD and then also uh, downtown Tempe partner on uh, for almost 24 hours a day in and around. Um, certainly, that's going to be a, a key component um, as we get more activation. Um, hopefully, it's something that makes folks feel safer throughout, but we really see that partnership continuing um, in the way that it, it, it currently is. So we, we anticipate defaulting from a security perspective there. Um, certainly, our teams from a maintenance standpoint are there mostly um, early mornings to early afternoon to just add some, some additional folks on site. Next question, is the city using taxpayer money to help pay for or construct these proposed activities? Um, we would anticipate, we know that from a public-private partnership perspective, um, that there are opportunities for elements to be funded completely through private entities. Um, but we know that 
um, there are going to be likely some support elements that we will have to um, through our, our, our current capital program um, to actually look at funding as well. So we really do see this as an opportunity for uh, the private industry to lead, um, to design, build, and operate. Um, but we know that there's going to be opportunities um, for some support elements like restrooms, parking, and somewhat that we feel we would have some responsibility for. Um, so we'd anticipate it really being, um, I, I don't have a percentage mix, but it would be something that we certainly anticipate there's an opportunity for us to fund some, some support elements or some additional elements um, as, um, as we look at developing some of the conceptual plans that may be more of our responsibility moving forward. <clears throat> Okay, next question. Is it possible to develop an actual beach type area that people could use for laying out and playing in a designated area of the lake? Correct. There's on the north side, there is the boat beach that really is an entry point for some of the boats, the kayaks. Um, the master plan is identified um, on the north side, I believe, west of the Mill Avenue bridges, really more of an open sunbathing area. Um, the volleyball court area that currently exists could be that when, when it's not being used. Um, but from a passive perspective, there, there really are great opportunities, um, especially with the integration of water and land for a potential um, quote unquote beach area. I think where it gets a bit more difficult is you start interacting with the water um, as Sean and Craig have both alluded to, to previously, but that, that was something identified within the plan originally. Um, so it's certainly an opportunity for us, whether um, it's something that we would seek in a public private partnership. I'm not sure that may be something um, that we would potentially look at as an organization. Okay, based on the timing, we have time to uh, answer all the other questions, but any coming in after this point, we'll make sure that we get back to you or you can um, go to the website for more follow up. Is there a projected timeline of when the final ideas will be selected and RFPs issued? Um, I would anticipate by the end of the year, um, it's going to take some time after we go to council in um, early November. Um, we want to make sure that um, we can at least, I would anticipate that we would provide some recommendations to mayor and council to get their input. Um, and then from there, we would begin the drafting process. So I would say late 20, um, early 2021 is when we would anticipate we'll work with our team to make sure that it's, um, it's actually advertised in a way much like the RFI was. Um, that really seeks to get as much information as possible, but it could be towards the end of this calendar year, um, if not early 2021, as we anticipate. Um, also related to the RFP, given that some of the infrastructure improvements needed, like utilities or their costs, may not exactly be known at the time of submission, how does a potential submitter account for this when submitting? How does this work out? That's a great question. Um, I don't know that I know the the answer other than identifying some of the constraints, that certainly is gonna be a big question for anybody um, that is looking to submit a proposal, um, especially when it comes to electrical service, sewer service, and those sorts of things. We can confer with our engineering department before we submit the um, RFP, just to make sure that we've identified not just the constraints, um, but potentially what is available. Now, granted 135 acres of space, um, if we seek an RFP in a very specific area, that's that's an easier question to answer. Um, but outside of that, I think it's going to be a bit more difficult to identify the constraints um, just in total, um, but in a very detailed fashion for every area in and around the Tempe town line. But certainly those are things that we work through as an organization um, when we look at park improvements just in general. So certainly something that we can um, try to give some information that would be helpful. Uh, but it's probably not going to be exhaustive unless we look for something within a very specific area. Okay, and then this didn't have to be asked, but I'm just going to share it because it's a, a shout out to our great staff uh, comments on the path that now continues beyond Tempe Marketplace. So uh, the we recently had that next underpass open, so you can go the full length there at McClintock, and then the one at Priest, I think, has been open now for a little while. So good job, she says. Awesome. Uh, next question, uh, will the current walking and bike sidewalks remain the same to retain the wonderful walking and biking opportunities, which relates to our, our new path? Yeah, understanding connectivity is a key piece and, and the, um, the sidewalks, not just in the ones that Shauna mentioned have been opened up through connection, but also internally are a key component. What we want to make sure is that we are um, looking at connectivity. Now that connectivity may change where a sidewalk is placed potentially, 
um, but we do want to make sure that we do provide that connectivity. So we don't want to limit where a potential amenity would go if there's a sidewalk there currently, but we do want to take into consideration that accessibility and connectivity is going to be a key piece um, to the larger system where we don't want to lose that continuity. So we would, would take that into consideration. Um, I would anticipate we would um, ensure that that connectivity still remains. I can't see that we wouldn't, um, but we would factor in the placement of an amenity um, in the most appropriate spot, understanding that accessibility from parking lots and other support structures and the larger system are going to be key components to that. Next question, a riverboat idea is great. Any way to interact with the water is a must. Would it be possible to have a riverboat ferry that could be fitted with drink and dining options? Yeah, I think that's a great opportunity of combining some of the water-based um, activities um, with some of the land-based support amenities. Now, I'm not sure legally what we're allowed to or not allowed to do within the water or on the water. Um, but as folks have proposed some of the brew boat options, I don't see this being too much more of a stretch from that. Okay, next question. Um, currently swimming is prohibited unless it's an event. Will that change? Um, I think that would be, that's one of the constraints that we'd have to work through with Greg Caggiano and Sean Wagner as we um, look at implementing any of the potential improvements that have been suggested that we would see. So. That certainly is a key piece, but much like some of the um, other constraints that we have on site. So we do allow swimming, but it is, as was mentioned, um, tied to events. So we just want to make sure that we do our due diligence uh, before going too far down a path to make sure that it is absolutely possible before we, we submit, we look for some submissions from an RFP perspective. And then, uh, Craig, there's a question related to why the old splash playground was closed. John, is that one that you want to take? Sure. Uh, the old splash playground was closed just as a result it had fallen into disrepair. Uh, so we were looking at that and then uh, evaluating its um, just different factors like location and, and everything else and accessibility. And, and we just determined uh, with our aquatic needs assessment plan um, that the that the splash playground could be moved or just rebuilt in, in a different area, which it ended up at Kiwanis Park. We now have the cloud uh, and it's just, it's a little bit more centralized location where folks um, have some greater access uh, to the amenity itself. Thanks, Sean. And then a question, is there any hope of maintaining a through path along the riverbank during events that close Tempe Beach Park? Sean, you want to grab that from an events perspective? So from an events perspective, we always try to uh, just take a look at that and we work with event promoters about trying to keep public access. Uh, but you are correct. Sometimes there are events uh, that um, do require, you know, a, a reroute or uh, or some uh, some other type of detour uh, during the event. So uh, we'll continue to work with them as we continue to move forward. Um, and it's our hope, you know, that um, Folks enjoy the events uh, as well as uh, you know the other um, uses in and in and around the lake uh, as we continue to move forward. But great, great suggestion, great question, and uh, definitely something that I know our special events task force committee uh, takes a look at and, and considers uh, as a part of their um, approval on during of an event. And then last comment, kind of question, it's more of a comment, but it's appropriate uh, that the Rio Reimagine project yesterday was designated as the 20th Urban Waters Federal Project that includes 55 plus miles of the Rio Salado uh, cities and Native American communities working together to improve, restore, and enhance the river system. Um, so that's another item we can also link to from the project website. Craig or Craig, I don't know if you wanted to say anything um, regarding the Rio Reimagine to, and then kind of close and wrap us up. Absolutely. Yeah, we have we have a team that's that's on that that group as well um, within the Rio Reimagine group. So it's certainly something that um, we're not looking at what we're doing within the Rio Salado and the Tempe Town Lake outside of the larger regional effort. Um, but we also know that we have an opportunity on the individual level. Um, to really focus in some of our areas uh, within the Tempe Town Lake. Um, just to close us, I do want to thank you um, for taking the time, whether it was um, live um, through the virtual meeting or coming back after the fact. Um, contact information is there. 
Um, the survey uh, is open through um, the 1st of October. Please take time, pass it along to friends, family, anybody who you think may be interested. We do want to make sure that we get as many responses as possible um, so that when we follow up with mayor and council in early November, we have an opportunity uh, really to show what, what great feedback and input we got from the public. Um, hopefully some things really um, become evident based on the, the input that would help support um, the, the recommendations that we would have and, and really our next steps. We know that this is an important plan and, and an area that is, is certainly important to us as an organization and, and to the larger Tempe public, but also um, just regionally um, in, in a very central valley location. So we're, we're anticipating um, the next 20 to 30 years, this being really a key first phase of, of what's to come. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, Craig, Sean, and team appreciate the time that you took and the input that you um, have given. Um, hopefully, this has been something that uh, that we've we've answered the questions um, and provide an avenue for for input. But please uh, email, um, shoot me a give me a call if you have any questions, especially as it leads into that that uh, early October October first time frame. So, with that, Sean, I'll turn it over to you. If you've got anything else, if not, we'll we'll close. That's it. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate you moderating. Thanks, everyone. Take care. <clears throat>